Layers are an essential feature that's available in most image editing software and are an effective way to organize content in your projects. They provide convenience and flexibility as each layer can be worked on individually in a non-destructive manner. This means that changes you make will not affect other parts of an image. Let's first explore the concept of layers. Think of it as pieces of transparent film, each containing content that are stacked on top of each other. From the top, you will be able to see what is on the corresponding film below. You can arrange the layers of film depending on which you like to appear first. You can also add, modify, or remove any of the film layers to suit your requirements. And that's the basic gist of it. Let's see how layers work in Pixlr X. Take a look at the layers panel on the right. If things get too busy, you can minimize the other panels for a better view. Here, we have three layers, and you can see from the thumbnails that they consist of, from the top, a text layer, a shape layer, and a background layer. Your sequence of arrangement corresponding to how the composition looks like. A composition or composite would mean an image that is made up of several different images or elements that are combined into one, just like what we have here in the work area. Individual layers can be organized and moved either up or down by clicking and dragging them, or by selecting the layer and using the arrow functions. Notice what happens when the text layer is moved under the shape layer. The text is now behind the shape layer, and to bring it back to the front, you'll need to move the text layer back to the top of the stack. When you start your projects with an image, the image itself will be a background layer. By default, the background layer will be locked, indicated by this padlock icon. So before you can move it around, you first need to unlock it. You can do so by using a few methods. The quickest would be to double-click on the icon itself. Another would be to unlock it from the layer settings. You can also select the Arrange tool and click on Unlock. You'll know it's unlocked when the icon disappears. And now, the background layer can be moved and manipulated freely. Because the image covers the entirety of the canvas, moving it to the top of the stack will block out everything else that's below it. In this case, we can use the Layer Transparency option in the layer settings to adjust the opacity of the layers. The layer will become fully transparent when the slider is dragged all the way down to zero. We'll come back to the rest of the settings here in a moment. For the time being, let's rearrange the layers back to their original state. When we add new elements or images, they will load in their own individual layers. So for the next part, we will see what methods are available. New layers can be added by clicking on the plus symbol, where the options of adding either an empty layer, image layer, or a text layer will be presented. An empty layer allows you to draw and add shapes, or even text. An image layer allows you to load images from your computer. Adding a text layer will load the text tool for you to start typing directly. Other elements, such as borders and stickers, will appear on their own layers when they are applied as well. OK, let's just remove some of the extra layers for a tidier demonstration. Click on the layers you don't want and tap Delete. As you continue your edits and add more layers to your projects like we just did, you can choose to show or hide each individual layer for better focus. Uncheck the box here on the right of the layer to hide it. When all layers are hidden, you'll be left with a checkered background, usually to signify that it is a transparency. Check the boxes again to turn the layers back on. Content on layers can be moved by highlighting the respective layer and then using the Arrange tool from the toolbar. For quick access, you can tap V on your keyboard. A bounding box will then appear around the element, allowing you to move or manipulate it further. All right, let's return to the layer settings. The layer settings provide functions to customize layer properties and styles, as well as for combining, duplicating, and deleting layers. You can rename your layers for better identification and even experiment with blend mode to achieve different results for your images. 
The topic of blend modes is a rather lengthy one, so we will be covering that in another video. We've looked into the transparency settings where you can adjust the opacity of your layers, as well as the lock and unlock and visible hidden functions. That brings us to the merge layer functions. While layers are great for keeping things organized, having too many layers will often take up a hefty amount of memory, and this generally slows down performance. Thus, it's always wise to review your progress along the way and tidy up your layers for a smoother editing experience. And here's where the functions come in handy. First, the Merge Down function. It combines the selected layer with the layer that's directly below it. Alright, let's say we're happy with how the text and shape elements look like here, and do not foresee any further changes to it. The text layer is directly above the shape layer, so all that needs to be done is to have it selected and click Merge Down from the layer settings. This combines both layers and they are now a single layer. Okay, let's undo that step to demonstrate the next function, Merge Visible. As the name implies, it merges only visible layers and ignores any that are hidden. We'll hide a layer and then select Layer Settings and select Merge Visible. This will merge all visible layers to the bottom regardless of the sequence. The hidden ones will remain at the top. The final option would be Flatten Image. This directly combines all layers into a single background layer, with any hidden layers ignored and removed. It also removes any editing capabilities previously present on individual layers. This function is commonly applied at the end of the editing process, where everything is complete and there are no foreseeable changes to the image. However, it is always good practice to have a layered version of your edits as backup. If you'd like to make a copy of any layer, you may use the duplicate layer function right here. Duplicate can be used when you like to have a few copies of the same content, or also as a means of backing up an original background layer before you start your edits. And lastly, delete to remove any extra layers. Tapping on delete on your keyboard works as well. And there you have it, the layers functions. It's definitely good to familiarize yourself with them as they will help make work more organized and efficient.